There is nothing worse than poor patter. It can destroy a perfectly good set of songs. So what is good patter and how do you make sure you're getting the most out of your time on stage? Sound check. Check one, check two. Hi, welcome to Voice Essentials where we develop your voice and improve your sound. My name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist and it's my job to help singers just like you to get the very best out of their voice. Now patter, or in the case of what we're talking about today, poor patter, is the commentary between songs that can leave your set sounding unrefined and disjointed if you're not careful. We've all heard the young performer introduce their song by saying, this song is called Gerbils in the Mist. I hope, I really hope you like it. Now, introductions like this one always make me feel just a little uncomfortable. Firstly, is there a reason I might not like it? Is the performer actually revealing their deeply seated insecurity with a vowed request to actually like them as opposed to the song? And beyond that, what's so interesting about Gerbils in the Mist anyway? Before the singer has even started singing, the audience has been orientated to a negative anticipation of what is about to unfold as opposed to a positive one. So, how do we set up our performances for success? In 2009, I had the very good fortune to wander the halls of the Louvre in Paris. I did so with the assistance of a gallery guide. Now, during the tour, we came to a hall filled with magnificent 14th century paintings. Captivated by the artwork, it was our tour guide who drew my attention to the wonderful frames that had surrounded the masterpieces. He explained that a good frame does not detract from the art, but instead causes the eye to be drawn inwards towards the painting. If the frame is too large or too elaborate, the eyes get caught admiring that which should be secondary. And this is exactly what our patter should do for our songs our patter should draw the audience member in towards a song. And importantly, good patter is generally not long-winded. As audience members, we've all had the misfortune to endure a five-minute patter for a three-minute song. And sometimes I've sat through patter that reduced the mystery of the song's lyric simply because the performer talked us through each and every line. Now, I know you want to develop great patter, so let's quickly outline a few things that will help you develop the skill of awesome patter. When working with beginner performers, I highly recommend practicing patter alongside the song. And this means that every time you sing through your song, make sure you add your patter as either an intro or outro. And by doing so, your patter becomes a part of the piece. For example, when I'm preparing a show, I'll often formulate what I'm going to say and when I'm going to say it, and then I'll rehearse my patter in between the songs. And this brings us to the, but what do I say question? Well, let's first deal with beginner performers. If you're just starting out, I recommend following the rule of threes. Name of the song, name of the cover artist, and an interesting tidbit. So using your rule of threes, we might introduce a song by saying, the next song I'll be performing is one of Michael Jackson's most famous pieces. And in fact, Rolling Stone reports that MJ laid the vocals for this piece in one take. Well, I'm always up for a challenge. So here, here's my single take version of Billie Jean. Short, sharp, and importantly, it builds anticipation for what is coming. Of course, if your song is an original written by your wonderful self, then your pattern might read like this. I wrote my next song on a cold, misty morning after a trip to my local zoo. I find so much inspiration in nature and animals can be so darn cute and interesting, especially gerbils. The next piece I've aptly titled, Gerbils in the Mist. Now, if you're a beginner, you might even want to take the time to write your patter down on paper. I'd stop short of learning it like a script because it can start to sound a little robotic. But the exercise of writing it down might just help to clarify your thoughts. If you're a seasoned performer, then I encourage you to spend a little more time thinking about what you're saying to your audience and how you're saying it. Take the time to honestly assess 
whether your patter is adding or subtracting from your performances. If it's the latter, rework your patter by getting back to the basic rule of threes and rebuild from there. Sound check. Often the largest hurdle to good patter is performance anxiety. Nerves can cause us to race through our time on stage. Well, fortunately, well-prepared patter can actually allow you a moment to manage your nerves prior to singing. So make sure you take the time to intro your piece well. Finally, there's no substitute for live practice. Ultimately, your patter is going to improve the more time you spend on stage. So get out there and start pattering like a pro. Here at Voice Essentials, I want to develop your voice and improve your sound. Every month, I upload new videos, just like this one, that will provide you with tips, tricks, and instructions on how to get the very best out of your voice. You can have the voice you've always wanted. So, if you want to engage with the latest information available to contemporary vocalists, then hit the subscribe button and join our ever-increasing family of singers from across the globe who are realizing the full potential of their voice. But for now, until I see you in the next Voice Essentials video, I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.